Hey folks, hey welcome back. Sorry I've uh, <laughs> I've been maintaining a low profile for the last few weeks but we'll explain about that after. But we're back on it today. We're um, we're down at our well one of our barn owl locations. So last oh, the last few few days, well probably the last week, it's been horrible. The weather's been rubbish. And I'll be honest, well I might as well explain that. Last last few weeks I've just been struggling like mad. Every time I've been out, you know, taking pictures, I've just, <laughs> I've just not got anything. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I've not been doing any films. Uh, it's no good going out and, and taking pictures of, uh, well, making videos of, of <laughs> taking no pictures. That's no fun, is it? So I don't know. We're getting a bit disillusioned, to be honest. Getting a bit, uh, I don't know. I'm just fed up with it, to be honest. But we're back on it now. We've, uh, well, hopefully, hopefully we've turned a corner. So the weather's booked up a bit and um, we're gonna have a do with these these bernies now hopefully they'll, they'll show because like I say the weather's been a bit rubbish so they don't like hunting in wet weather so fingers crossed now what I want to do I want to put a new post up we've got um, there's a really nice post up I did I did a film uh, a couple of months ago now where I'd been out on the marshes and I called back on on the way home to this particular spot and I got some really nice shots with the 600 well <laughs> the 600 has gone now and we've uh, we've pulled the trigger on the old uh, on the 500 pf so we've got the 500 pf the prime that's what we're uh, we're going to be shooting with tonight um so we're going to put a new post up leaving that other one up as well just gives me another another couple of options um we'll show you what gear we brought with us so i'm gonna i want to get this set up as quick as i can really because it's it's half past one now and i think there's a good chance they'll probably come out early so we've brought, we've got the, the Trager pan, we've got the V6 with us, okay, we've got the we're big high footage TC9 tripod, we've got the chair, camera bag, vlogging gear, and I'll show you this post, so, so this is, you might have seen this one, I've had some, uh, the last, the last buzzard film that I did, I had this post set up and I got some belting pictures, I had the, the pigeon on the top and I got some lovely photos. Now, this this old fence post, I picked this up, I don't know, about a couple of years ago now, it was in a in an edge row, it snapped off, you can see where it's, it's not that big, it's snapped off at the bottom. So what I've had to do, I've just put a couple of pieces of Dexian hang lion on the bottom and then we can put it in the ground I've got a couple of pieces of like slate batten I'll just put them in at angles nail them in so that's pretty rock solid then but something like this it's you know it makes makes the image if I can get a barn owl sat on top of this it'll look absolutely fantastic because things like this they take years and years to age you know all these little all them little cracks in it and you know the splits in the end and the the old barbed wire they just they just look you can't recreate it you know if someone said to you can you make me one of them posts you'd never do it because like i said the, the weather worn and all that barbed wire is rusted and it'll just look look superb so if we can get a barn owl on top of that we're <laughs> we're on to a winner aren't we so that's what i want to do now one of my main considerations is I want to get the distances right because we're on this new lens, we're on the 500 PF, so it's a prime lens. I've not got that versatility with the zoom, um, so I look at my distances and make sure when I go into video mode on the Z62, we get a, a crop factor. I think it's one. I think it's 1.5. I'm not sure. So I've got to make sure that the post isn't too close. Uh, and then we you know we fill the frame completely so that's a consideration I also want um, a good distance between the post and the background because we're losing a stop um, we're up, we're at 5.6 fixed aperture on this 500 pf so we lose that bit of image separation you know on the f4 and the 302.8 we got that fantastic bokeh and that completely blown out background so that's something you've got to got to kind of consider you know, if you're using a lens that um, that has a smaller aperture, like I said, that you know, 5.6 on the on the Sigma, that 
when you get to a longer focal length, it goes to 6.3, so that's um, you know even even smaller aperture. So we're going to get this set up now. Get me distances right. We're going to bang this hide up, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll uh, break this hoodoo that we've had over the last few weeks, and we might get a few decent pictures. <laughs> right. So come on, let's get set up. Okay, so distance wise, that's our, our other post you can see there. Um, I'm just bringing this a little bit closer. Yeah, should be alright that. I said so we're just going to drive it down into the ground, get these, these metal spikes down, and then I'm just going to put a couple of pieces of slate batten, and that should be plenty solid enough for it. So there you go, got a nice post in now, I've got my distances right, I've had a check, got the camera out, made sure I'm not too close, not too far away either, just consolidated it with them two pieces of slate batten, nailed them in, put a bit of foliage down the bottom, you know we might just get them in shot. Another really important thing when you're doing a setup like this, wherever you, wherever you put your hide or wherever you're shooting from, before you get bedded down, make sure there's nothing in the way because there's nothing worse than getting set up the bird comes out he might land straight it he might never land on it we don't know do we that's the gamble but if it landed on that and there's another big piece of grass in the way you know 10 feet back or wherever obstructing my view oh it's, it's just so disappointing so get your hide set up get the camera on the tripod and make sure that it's unobstructed yeah. Right, we're set up, we're ready to go. Uh, if I keep looking through here, you'll have to excuse me because I'm just, I'm watching to see if this barn owl actually comes out of its uh, little roosting building that it's in. So, as I was saying before, um, those of you that watch the channel will know the issues that I had when I bought the Z62. Now, the lenses that I bought previously on the D500, I got um, a 600mm f4, which was a, an AFS, the uh, D2 version. I also had a 300 2.8, again AFS D2 version, and they were fantastic. With the D500, they were absolutely lightning. I couldn't fault them at all. And I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't get that much use out of them, and. That was for no fault of the lenses, but the thing was, I ended up buying a Z62, the mirrorless, Nikon mirrorless. Now, that was partially, no fault on the D500, it was down to YouTube. <laughs> and the I need the ability, when you're doing YouTube, you need video, and you need good video. And the ease at which you can 
you know, do video with the Z62 was a game changer. So I bought the Z62 and I thought that those lenses would work seamlessly with it. And I looked into it and the AFS lenses, it said they worked fine. And they didn't. They were a, oh, I, I really, really struggled with them. You know, the, the, the autofocus was slow, it was hunting, focus breathing, and I just couldn't suss it out. So, as much as it pained me, I mean, it'd have been lovely to keep them, but they're an expensive doorstop, aren't they? Well, not a doorstop, I mean, I'd have used them with the D500 all the time, but the advantages of the mirrorless over the you know, the DSLR, the silent shutter, the full frame, you know, the extra um, resolution and the ease to do the video. I wanted to be using the Z62 all the time, so they had to go. Uh, you know, it pained me, I took a bit of a hit on them, which you do, don't you, when you when you trade up and you sell photo gear, you take a hit, but that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? So they went and we ended up after much deliberation and watching every YouTube video in the world, I ended up buying this. This is the Nikon 500PF and when it came, I thought they'd sent the wrong lens, I thought they'd sent me a, a 70 to 200 or something, it is absolutely, look at the size of it, that's a 500mm prime and it's tiny and I've not had the best of luck with it up to now, but the images that I have took, they have been absolutely razor sharp. And um, it's just the the advantages of this. I know I'm losing a stop over that over that f4. You know, it's 5.6, but I think we can cope with it. I, I really do. I think we'll be able to manage with it. So this is this is one of the reasons I've come down here today to try and get some images of these these barn owls. Hopefully. Uh, as I was saying earlier on in the in the film, I've really struggled lately. I've got really disillusioned. You know, the last few weeks, that's the reason why I've not put any films out because I've not managed to get any decent images. I've had I've had a few pictures here and there, but nothing where I could you know get a get a decent film together. And I think you you go through spells like that, don't you? You know, where it's just not it's just not clicking. Sometimes you can go out and you know you can be out ten minutes. When you've got a bucket full of shots, but other times you can be out for days and days on end. You know, led there. I've been I've been down at my local river, at, you know, a new uh, kingfisher location, and I've seen, they've been flitting up and down, not landing on the perches I've put out for them. Another barn owl location. You know, I've um, I put a nest box up for them, and <laughs> they've just not been obliging at all. But that's how it goes. That's that is the nature of wildlife photography. So we're back on it. All being well, we're out with this. We're uh, we're going to run this through its paces, and hopefully, you know, this uh, teaming up with this Z62, it's going to be uh, the dream package, and it's it's so handy. I mean, when I got that 600, um, that 600 f4, I remember the first time I took it out, and I had it mounted on this tripod because you need them on a tripod. You can't hand hold them not for longer than you know 20 seconds. I had it on that and I was lugging it around this wildlife reserve and my shoulder were killing me. And if you sat in a hide all day long, the the great aren't they? You can't beat them. But this, I mean, when when you've got... Um, let's have a look. Get this lens hood on. You know, it's so versatile. You can just... You can handle that all day long. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a beautiful thing and it's it's really well made. I'm going to do a proper review on it uh, eventually, but I say I can't I can't do a, a review on it at the moment because I've I haven't really used it that much to be honest. So it'd be uh, it'd be foolish to do a review so quick. But first impressions, absolutely fantastic. I love it. It's I say it's just so light and well made, proper well made. Just because it's uh, it's small and and light doesn't mean to say that it's it's not well made, you know, it's fully weather sealed, it's, you know, VR, it's, it's got all the bells and whistles on it. Uh, yeah, so, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get it on this tripod, get me, uh, get me angles right, we'll get a brew on, and hopefully this barney will come out to play and get on that new post. <laughs> That's the plan.
as part of my ongoing battle against freezing cold feet I bought a pair of these Ski Tech field boots now apparently they worked out to minus 35 so <laughs> it remains to be seen but I've, it's only the second time I've worn them and they are toasty they've got like a proper thick wool lining inside them so if anyone else suffers from cowed feet like I do give them a try they were how much did I, I paid 94 quid for them but I'm hoping it's going to be money well spent because there's nothing worse than having freezing cold feet and hands so we'll see we'll see what uh, the remainder of the winter has to chuck at us but I mean, it's not been too bad at the moment has it really we've not really had a proper winter so we'll see I'll tell you what we've got that boring owl's not come out yet pigs are back just found one in bottom at camera bag it was like a zombie fig I don't know how long it had been in there even I won't eat that Cheers everyone. Yeah, what I've decided to do, I've decided to leave this side of the hide open because when I look out on this aspect, there's a, a big field here that the, the barn owls hunt over. So I've got the, the camera on the tripod now, ready for if it lands on these posts. Um, I'll be able to see it coming out of the barn so that's that angle covered. If it doesn't land on any of the posts and it continues to hunt around the fields, um, you know, and I, I want to get some flight shots, I can always just whip it off the tripod and I've got this big wide open aspect to shoot out of. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Well, what can I say? I am pretty impressed with this thing. The Nikon 500 PF. I'm well impressed. It is, it is so good to be able to just hand hold. I mean, it's so deceiving. <laughs> you look at it and it's tiny. It's a, it's a really small lens, but don't be deceived by 
by its dimensions because it it packs a punch this thing it's um, yeah look at it it's just ridiculous ridiculously small yeah I love it and looking at the images on the back of the camera it um, yeah it performs in that department as well I mean obviously we'll have a look when we get back on the uh, on the computer but I mean I've read out reviews on this I know how good a lens this is there's no there's, I'm not kidding myself that is this is a, a cracking lens but like I said the main thing it's just that ability to be able to handle you know if you if you're walking through woods um, depending on what kind of photography you do I mean I, d I do a lot of hide work and but it, it's just nice to to have, have something in your arsenal that you can just pick up chuck in a, in a bag I can put this into a small bag um, go off into the woods with a, with a set of camo and stalking wise this is superb I can't do that with a 600 f4 uh, it's just too heavy you can't you can't handle them but this you know combine it with a bean bag or just rest it on whatever you don't even need a bean bag you know you can hold that all day long so I think this is going to be a bit of a game changer I really do and so combining it with this with no more focus issues which was the you know that's this is what led me to get this this lens so we've addressed that this is all we're going to be shooting with this year I'm um, you can get a bit, I don't know, you get a bit bogged down with gear and I mean <laughs> saying that I keep seeing every, everyone's getting the uh, the Z9 now I feel like I'm being left behind again I've only just got the Z6 II but hey, you can't have everything but you know we never never say never we'll not be getting it this year I know that that's for sure but um, no for this year we're going to be shooting with the 500 PF I've still got my 150 to 600 contemporary, which is a, a great lens, a fantastic value lens, you know. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing this year. We're going to be shooting with them two lenses, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get. All right. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and all the comments. If you want, you know, any questions, pop them in the comments. I always, I always get back to you eventually. Um, you know we're, we're busy people aren't we like and uh, you know working full time as well so I, I don't always get back to you straight away but I will do eventually all right so thanks again for the support it's uh, you know it, it's overwhelming really I mean we're, we're nearly at 10,000 subscribers which is phenomenal so if you haven't subscribed give us a subscription give us a thumbs up and a like and all that malarkey and uh, we'll catch you on the next one thanks again